basic organization that's a one to one architecture or also we call it as a basic computer architecture so let's see this diagram black diagram which represents the one to one architecture or basic computer architecture that means whatever the computer we see this computer it can be divided into these many modules and uh, let's see in this how each module interacts with the other module so let's start with the first one input devices so input devices means you know this uh, keyboard mouse and all so they comes under input devices and their main functionality is sending the data and instructions that is a program you can say in the program you will have both whatever the program c program you are going to write and that program contains both data and instructions so that is been transferred to main memory it is sending to main memory you can see two types of arrows here one is dotted arrow other one is a solid arrow so this dotted red arrow indicates flow of data and instructions and this uh, solid arrows indicates control signals or commands usually sent by the control unit here i'll tell you what is it so let's start with this first part as i said input devices so input devices as i said keyboard and mouse they are going to send the program which contains both data and instructions to the main memory right so that's the first functionality then we had main memory that we call it as even ram okay ram and this is basically a temporary storage area where it stores both data and instructions from the program whatever we write okay data and instructions sent by this keyboard will be stored in this main memory this main memory we are calling it as a ram okay and next this also interacts with the secondary memory secondary memory you can see here and this is a, this is the interaction you can interaction what type of arrow it is this arrow is it sends both data and instructions this red arrow right so this red arrow <clears throat> this sends both data and instructions here right and uh, you can see what is the secondary memory whatever the hard disks you see whatever the sddc you see these are all secondary memory they are basically meant for long term storage let's say you are storing a movie or you are uh, i mean you are saving a movie or else you are saving some files text file whatever images etc all those will be stored in this secondary memory so sometimes whenever it is required whenever you open that particular uh, movie or whatever it is that is brought from the secondary memory to main memory okay so that means this main memory is interacting with the secondary memory whenever required so next is registers here so registers uh they are basically inside the cpu this is your cpu inside the cpu there are different modules so this uh, memory part this memory part main memory under main memory you will have uh, under memory part we have even registers also so this registers are inside the cpu they are basically used to high speed access so accessing the data and instructions within no time for the al you can see here okay this is near to cpu within the cpu these registers they are very high speed you can say now this is the highest speed registers are highest speed and these are high speed okay and they are moderately medium or low speed you can think of it low or medium speed okay so this is how memory hierarchy which is here now whatever the instruction we sent they are sent to the main memory from main memory we are going to from main memory we are going to take it to registers so first here and then here and then we had next component so we had done this and data program instructions and program both move to the main memory from there it is moved to the registers now we had the task of cpu and this cpu as a contains different units are there there is a unit called control unit and there is another unit called alu that is arithmetic logic unit 
and you see here this control unit it is it is having solid arrows and this solid arrows indicates control signals or commands means this is used to control the control all the modules of the computer when i say all the modules of the computer what are they it is input devices it is a main memory it is the output devices it is secondary memory even it is a uh, alu and even register these are all the modules of the computer right now what it is doing what is the task of this control unit means it fetches the instructions and data from main memory so this control unit you can see here from main memory it is fetching the data and instructions here there is one control unit a uh, one control instruction and then it also decodes decodes means whatever the program you have written whatever the uh, instructions you have given those instructions are translated into machine understandable language okay that machine understanding language it will convert this it's not a compiler and interpreter don't forget about it, it just it is translate whatever the uh, instructions received by the compiler or interpreter into this machine understandable this decodes them then also it is other task of this CP control unit is directs the flow of data between how many units from main memory registers and alu so as i said from main memory it fetches data and instructions and also it will tell to move from main memory to uh, main memory to registers and also from registers to alu so it is directing this you can see this direction symbols are there here right these are the control signals you see here it is interacting with alu it is interacting with uh, registers it is interacting with the uh, main memory it is interacting with the uh, io devices it is interacting with the input devices it is also interacting with the secondary memory that implies what it is controlling every component of the computer system right that you keep in mind right next so control unit is one part in the cpu second part you can see this is the first unit and second part we have registers this is the these are the registers as i said already registers are very temporary fast storage devices they reside inside the cpu itself and they are basically used to store data and instructions that are currently being executed okay that's very important so if for example if your movie is there if your image is there those images are usually stored in the secondary memory those are not currently executed in general but whenever you open an image or video that is the one which is currently being executed so that is brought to this and brought to the registers so finally at registers will any operations you are performing on that image or video those will be executed and those stored in the registers finally during the execution time okay then we had alu that is arithmetic logic unit and this arithmetic logic unit basically used to perform certain fundamental operations <clears throat> what are the operations we call it as arithmetic operations other operations we call it as logical operations so arithmetic operation under arithmetic operation what are they kind of operation like addition subtraction multiplication division so on so these are the basic fundamental arithmetic operations what will be the logical operations it means i'll explain don't worry about this how we are going to perform addition subtraction multiplication all that stuff in programming languages and also and operation or logical operations such as and or not nor x or one so on so are there those operations also we are going to perform don't worry about now just understand arithmetic logic unit perform two types of operations one is arithmetic operation other one is the logical operation and so what are the other task of uh, uh, data this is cpu means it is also data usually flows from the registers to alu and back to the registers after processing this is you can see here so where it is flowing data registers to alu it is flowing after processing that result is flowing from, from say, alu to again registers back so this data and instructions as i said you remember this red dotted line indicates data and instructions the solid line indicates this solid line indicates solid line indicates it is a control signal which is used by the control unit of the cpu right now so if required as i said if required data is fetched from or fetched from or stored to secondary 
memory via main memory means if you want to get any data or image as i said image or video whatever which are permanently stored those can be fetched from and stored to okay fetched from stored to whenever required and that is via main memory so main memory is the intermediary access intermediary component that lies between the uh, secondary memory and the cpu now finally so whatever the operations that are performed by the cpu and those will be the result we can say the result is sent from main memory to output output device you can see here so result is sent to main memory to output devices okay so this is put moved backward to the uh, you know say let us say can uh, sit i l u perform some operation it sent back to registers from registers to again main memory from main memory to it is going to output devices output device means what it could be monitor it could be printer anything of such kind okay so this is how computer organization works means whenever you write a program what will happen i am again i am summarizing whenever you write a program what will happen program will be written by the input devices and those are moved to the main memory from main memory the data and instructions are moved to the registers from registers alu takes that instructions and data and it will perform the operations after performing the operation it store the result back to the registers after storing the result results send uh, store it to main memory main memory it will give to the output devices output devices such as monitor and printer so entire process is controlled by the this control unit means sending the data and instructions the flow of data and instructions the commands all that stuff is managed by the control unit right so you can see here one example how exactly cpu works let's see here this is your memory and it has the two components this is the address okay this is the underline one or address and these are the values okay values means at that particular address there is some value stored okay and this right hand side after this there are the values here now this is the cpu in the cpu we have a registers as i said these are the registers let us say r1 r2 r3 so this is your r1 r2 so on so some r5 okay these are the registers that are present in the cpu and let's say these are the instructions under data that as you can see here so this is load is a instruction add is a instruction store is a instruction now what is that this is data Hundred is the data, okay? Hundred is the data. This is your register. R one is the register, right? Let's see now what will happen with this. So in this example, what we are doing, we are setting a value or data to register R one. That means what? We are setting means what? We are initializing the register with some value hundred, okay? And later on, what I am doing? Second instruction is what? R two. I am loading the value at the address hundred. This is a load. Load means what? Store take the value from this hundred. So under location, what is the value present? Under location value present is ten. That means R two is now storing ten at hundred location. Value ten is here. Here you can see. And R one anyhow we have set value hundred directly without storing any any from any memory. But here I am storing, uh, retrieving from the memory. R two is retrieved from the memory. Okay, this is from the memory. Okay, at address zero x hundred some address. Okay, now what is R three? What is the next instruction? This is the next instruction. Here, what I am doing? Right hand side, you see equal to right hand side of equal. Add R one R two. What is the value in R one hundred? What is the value in R two ten? So what is the result of this? It is one ten. And this one ten, where I am setting, I am setting to R three. I am storing this into R three. That means what? R three register contains what? One ten. R one register contain what? Hundred. R two register contain what? Ten. So now, this registers what we have to do? We have to store back to main memory, right? Just now we have seen in the flow. So I am storing that value at one ten. One ten address one ten. What is the value at address one ten? This is the address value, address, and value is one ten. 
and that 110 i am uh, uh, whatever the value sorry sorry this is not it whatever the address at 110 that value in r3 will be set that means what at 0x 100 whatever the value in register r3 that is being set here now that is been stored storing means in the memory now we are updating with 110 okay is it clear it is not pre it is not pre-existing after performing this uh, addition operation after performing that addition operation and uh, using that value in a register r3 i am storing to the memory location 110 is that clear so this is how it works you can see here the basic components of a computer and this is the cpu inside cpu you will have all disks and so other components optical drive this is your main memory this is your cpu this is the motherboard these are other uh, some you know, accessories that are required for a computer